we're standing here in the basement level of one of the barracks of this fort. And we know that during the battle, this part of this building was being used as a hospital. There was a, a surgeon here. And I like to tell the story of the youngest defender of this fort, little Hugh Morrison, eight-year-old kid. And he's assisting his father, his father, the surgeon. So he's preparing bandages, helping to wrap bandages, things like that. And we know that a, a round, a bullet round, comes through the wall or through the window, not sure how, but a round comes into the building, hits little Hugh in the head. Now by rights, a well-placed round, a giant musket ball could explode your head. It doesn't hurt him that much. It knocks him down, doesn't kill him. It does create a a graze wound. It just grazes his skull enough to knock him down and draw some blood. So he picks himself up. He gathers his wits. His father kind of dresses his wound a little bit. And Hugh goes on assisting his father during the battle. When the fort is taken by storm and the enemy is inside the perimeter and every man is fighting for himself, trying to escape, Hugh and his father start to escape also. But in the confusion, in the darkness, in the smoke, in the din of battle, they get separated. Now, little Hugh will make it to the eastern side of the fort and manage to scramble down the cliffs to the river below. And this little kid swims across that river, which is about 1,800 feet. This is also one of the most treacherous places in the river. It is very, very deep. And because it's very narrow, there are very, very awful currents. Hugh does manage to get across. He manages to survive, and he does manage to reconnect with his father, who escapes through his own means, we don't know how. Now, when we get over to the other side of the fort, we'll talk a little bit more about Hugh's escape. 